My M20 manager threatened to ruin my promotion if I snitch about another manager M29 dating a minor F17. I currently work in Walmart and have been for the past two years, and a couple of weeks ago, we had a vacancy open up for one of our logistical managers who worked in the back room. I've worked in the back room more than anywhere else in the store, and a manager who's been pushing for my promotion, we'll call him Dave, is supposedly dating an employee who is currently 17 years old and a few of the people who I work with don't really like her, and they've spread around some gossip that I've tried to stay clear of. I work in the back room, so it is easier than most. I usually work alone and away from the registers where most of the more personable people go in my opinion, but I digress. I go to work, do my job, do it as best I can, and want to go home as soon as possible. My dad always told me to stay shy of office politics, and he used to be a shop steward before he retired, and I've talked to him about the situation I'm writing about now but I wanted to get some other opinions on the matter too. The 17-year-old girl works in soft lines, so most of the time, I only see her in passing, and we've only held a conversation about two or three times. Most of what I hear about her comes from people who I'm working with to unload trucks in the back and break them down, and they told me that Dave was always following her around and planning to promote her as some rumors have it, which according to them, is why some people don't like her. I won't lie, I sometimes enjoy listening to how life is in the store away from the boring back room, but I'm never in a position to be involved with any of the hoopla, and even if I was, I wouldn't do it anyway. However, one of the soft lines managers asked to talk to me in the truck after one of shifts, and after I had already clocked out, and she accused me of writing a recognition note saying that Dave is fuck backslash underscore backslash underscore backslash underscore backslash underscore Brianna and posting it on the board, and I swear that I had no idea that that existed until she told me. When I told her that, she said that she's been hearing some inappropriate things about her and that someone told a manager that I had been talking, and she was dead set on the idea that I wrote the note. I told her again that this was the first I've heard of it, along with how I'm technically off the clock as well, but she said she didn't appreciate me trying to ruin Dave's career and that if she heard anything else about it, that she would take it to our general manager and that that would be a very different conversation, along with how she assured me that they weren't dating, and I should have went straight to HR in hindsight, but as she was walking away, I was too scared to and just went to my car. And this happened yesterday as I'm still pissed about it. I talked to one of my friends who also works with me, and I told him what happened and that I didn't think it was appropriate for her to pull me aside like that after I had clocked out for the day, and he said it was weird how she asked to talk to me in the truck specifically where there were no cameras or anything to be put on record along with not giving me a heads up about it beforehand. He also told me that Dave's girlfriend posted photos of her and Dave making out on their Instagram story before, so everything she said was a bunch of BS, and I want to go back to HR as soon as tomorrow, my next shift while it's still fresh. But here's what I'm nervous and probably too emotional to see clearly right now. Dave is a good guy, and he is one of the people who have been talking me up for this promotion, although I think that I'd still get it maybe without him doing that, and personally, I don't care what his personal business is. I don't work in soft lines, and neither does he. I work in the back, and it wasn't my business until she confronted me and accused me for writing a note I didn't write. However, I'm also worried that someone has it out for me, and maybe whoever told said manager that I was, supposedly, saying shit, when I wasn't to screw with me, and I'm worried about that. I plan to go back to HR tomorrow for my next shift, but I'm not sure if I'll be emotionally prepared or have a chance to prepare in enough time, so I wanted to ask for an outside perspective on how to best go about bringing it up, along with how to address the fact that she explicitly threatened me, I feel like. And even after I go through with this, I'm not sure if it'd be too awkward to stay here even with the promotion or if I should start looking for another job, because no matter how this goes, it's probably gonna get ugly and weird. Thanks in advance to anyone who helps and provides a perspective that I maybe can't see in time for tomorrow. Too long didn't 
didn't read, a manager from Softlines threatened to ruin my promotion if I snitch about another manager dating a minor when I don't even work on the sales floor, and I stick to the back room away from most of the drama. She also accused me of writing a recognition note that says Dave is fuck backslash underscore backslash underscore backslash underscore backslash underscore Brianna that I knew nothing about until she accused me of it, and she accused me of this in the truck, where there are no cameras, after I had punched out for the day, and I want to ask for advice before going back for my next shift tomorrow and going to HR, since my mind is probably too emotional to sort everything out in just 24 hours. The way you described it here is actually quite good. You stick to the facts. Add that you were uncomfortable that the conversation took place in the truck, while you were off the clock. You're 20 years old and you know how to write better than most people your age. You also seem like a hard worker. Don't be afraid to do what's right, in the meantime, you should consider a career change. You are not reporting Dave, you are reporting the manager who accosted you out of hours over a private matter and accused you of things with no proof, you don't have to give details about Dave just tell HR the basic complaint and that since what she was talking about was rumors you had no knowledge of, they should ask her. But this is serious, she stepped way over the boundary line and needs putting back in her box and disciplining. She accosted you wrongly without any evidence and maligned you and threatened you. She cannot be allowed to get away with that. Write out a formal statement. Print it out if you can, or have it in your email ready to be sent. And talk to your HR person and say that you've already written a statement. I told my husband that he needs to prioritize his health but it ended with him feeling like crap. Too long didn't read, I told my husband that he needs to prioritize his health but it ended with him feeling like crap. For the last few months I've, F28, been feeling some type of way on how my husband, M27, doesn't take care of himself. Some may see this as controversial but we made a promise to each other, that we'd hold each other accountable if we were letting ourselves go. I know looks are not everything but the physical is part of why we're attracted to each other. On top of that, I want to continue living an active lifestyle and not let our health get in the way. Today I gave him a heads up that I'd like to talk about our health and fitness goals which gave him time to think about the topic while driving home. I laid it on him that it's very important that we take our health seriously since we plan on having a little one in about two years or less, and that it's a bit concerning that he doesn't really care about his health but I'm expected to maintain myself, i.e. he smokes, drinks two-thirds beers a day, eats out most days, doesn't work out, sleeps very little hours because he's on his computer till the late hours of the night and I have to schedule all our doctor appointments and practically drag him because he doesn't see the need of seeing a doctor. He got upset and started having a victim complex, feeling like he's having an intervention and that he now feels like crap and disgusting. But I reassured him that I wasn't trying to make him feel this way. Was there a better way to express my concerns without having him feel less than? Edit, for context. I take care of the household chores, work full time and am currently going to school to be chef specializing in plant based cooking. I don't mind what I do for our little family, I just want him to live long enough to enjoy this life with me. Second edit, many have mentioned he might be depressed which I didn't think about yesterday. Once he gets home today, I'll find out if he's mentally okay and how I can help. Third edit, my husband is in his office crying and I'm not sure what else to do. I asked him if there's something deeper going on and he didn't want to talk about, that I didn't say or do anything wrong. I asked if I could help him with the transition, but he wants to do it on his only. I want to go and comfort him but he locked the door and is crying. I'm at a lost, frowning face. Fundamentally the only person who can change is him, and he has to want to change. You can give him gentle prodding and support him. You can't make him change. Going forward you might try making the conversation more about what he wants or what things he wants to work on. Make your messaging less you're so unhealthy and more I love you and don't want anything to happen to you. Deleted. You sure this is the man you want to father your children? 
Has he always been like this? EA smoking, drinking every day, not sleeping, not caring for himself. If this is a change in his behavior, then you could bring up that you're concerned and curious what's going on with him, that this behavior is out of character with who he used to be. If this is the way he's always been, you can still express concern but these might be more difficult things for him to change. I think you were very honest and it was conversation that needed to be had. Most people get defensive when they know what you're saying is true. Deleted. Your husband had a defensive reaction because deep down inside he knows he has a problem. My wife has expressed similar issues to me, I have some chronic illnesses and I'm not always the best at getting sleep. I think the best way to approach it is to start off saying you are concerned for him. You don't sleep, you don't treat your body right etc. I love you and I want you to be here a long time. Tell him you're not accusing him of anything and you're coming from a place of love. Ask him how he feels about that. Listen to what he says, and repeat what he says back to him, so he knows you're listening. Say things like how would you feel going to a doctor for a checkup, or even you go to sleep so late, I really miss falling asleep with you. Can you go to sleep with me more often? Again, listen to what he says and say something that shows you're listening, EA I hear that you don't want to go to the doctor. Why is that? If he's still being defensive, you can drop the I'm finding myself less attracted to you bomb. His response will probably be intense. But if he loves you and cares about how you feel, he'll eventually come around because of course he wants you to find him attractive. Finally, if he's still defensive, it's ultimatum time, we need couples therapy. Or, you need to start taking care of yourself, otherwise I'm going to think long and hard if this relationship is going to work. Ultimately, this is all about communication. If you express your feelings calmly and clearly, and coming from a place of love, he should respond thoughtfully if you're in a healthy relationship. If he still acts reactively, it's time to think about couples therapy to help fix your communication issues. Good luck. From your brief description of your husband's lifestyle choices I'd say you don't have any reason to be any more gentle. I'm a 46 year old man who lived the same way in my early 20s as your husband is now, and I can remember when it finally sank in that I needed to change or suffer the rest of my life. Your husband is in denial, and probably well into the addiction territory on his habits. This means you aren't going to change course without significant discomfort on his side. Him getting upset is, in my opinion, the expected outcome here and demonstrates that you struck the nerve that he needs. There is a thin veil of comfort and satiety that comes with the poor choices your husband is making, although short-lived and with incrementally deleterious consequences for his health. When those coping mechanisms are threatened he will feel anxiety and discomfort. From your side, this is an existential threat to your well-being and long-term happiness. You understand this to some degree, otherwise you wouldn't have made a stand in the first place. But this should be your focus, in my opinion. You get one life to live, and your spouse will have a huge influence on the quality of your life. Some people might try to offer you strategies to help ease your husband out of his ways, but in a lot of ways I think this is just unfair. You shouldn't have to orchestrate a complicated set of maneuvers and incentives to inch your husband out of his ways. The benefits of general health and wellness are self-evident, and you don't need to justify your stance here whatsoever. This isn't about you being naggy or overly demanding. Your husband is stealing from you and not living up to his vows. I say dig in and stand your ground. Your willingness to bail out should be all the incentive he needs to change his crash course with a crappy unhealthy life. My mum body shames me, 15f, and I don't know how to not let it get to me. Hi, I'm 15, 5 feet 9 inches, 1.75 meters, and 65 kilograms, 143 pounds. I'm not overweight or unhealthy and I know I'm not. I'm definitely not super skinny, I have some excess fat on my stomach and legs but I never thought bad of it. I'm a very sporty person, I used to play sports, before the pandemic, about 5 to 6 times a week and consider myself in good shape slash fit. Now I try work out at least 4 time a week in the living room but it's not always possible with school work and space. It started really last March when 
the pandemic begun, my mum stopped going to work and I stopped going to school so we saw each other much more and that meant for meal times. Since then she started making comments on what I eat, stuff like are you gonna eat all of it? That's a huge portion, don't take any more, you don't need it. It just became insufferable and it was miserable. She let my sister eat whatever she wanted because she's the type that can eat a lot and not gain but when it came to me. She would cut my portion size, not give me the bread of a burger just stuff like that. It feels humiliating almost. I'm not proud of it but I started buying crap from the supermarket, chocolate, crisps, sweets whatever I felt like. Because of this I gained a bit but usually lost it in a couple of days because apart from that, I really didn't eat that much and I was still regularly working out. Then my mum got a scale and that turned out absolutely shit. Every time I got something to eat that wasn't on the plate she gave me for lunch or dinner, she'd ask me if I weighed myself recently which I thought was really shitty. The thing is, I can't lose this weight. She told me I'd be much happier if I was 58 kilograms and that's what she wants me to be. We get into fights a lot about it and she's always throwing it in my face that my belly looks bigger, the number of the scale is probably going up, I'm not slimming down. It really really hurts me and I've tried so much to talk to her about it but she doesn't take me seriously, saying that everyone needs to lose weight at some point and that it's normal. She also always tells me the story about how when she was my age, she was around 70 kilograms, she's 5 feet 5 inches, and that she lost it all by starving herself one summer. Another thing she does frequently is show me pictures of me a year and a half ago on holiday, in which she claims I looked about 55 kilograms even though I really don't see the difference, I was smaller and less developed. This particularly bothers me because I feel like I almost disappointed her by gaining and I hate that stupid picture of me in a swimsuit now cause I've seen it way too much. The problem is it's really gotten to me and I hate it. Now I'm obsessed looking at the scale and I'm now hyper aware of what people look like and every bit of food I look at I now instinctively check the calories. And I'm still stuck at the 63 to 66 kilograms weight that I know isn't bad but I sometimes just wish I was like lighter. I used to not care and I wish I didn't but I can't help it. If anyone has any advice or anything, I would really appreciate it. Thank you for reading I hope you have a nice day. Too long didn't read, my mum body shames me shames my food choices and it's bothered me a lot more than I would have liked it to. Edit, I just wanted to say firstly, thank you thank you so so much. This thread has been so informative, kind and supportive I'm literally in awe at the overwhelming response I got considering I don't usually post. Reading through all these compassionate and amazing responses has made my day and I'm so thankful for everyone who took their time to read this and give super advice. I hid the scale lol and my mum has been trying to find it but I don't think I'm going to pull it out anytime soon. Thanks to these comments, I didn't take note of any calories I had today and decided to eat a burger and fries to celebrate the end of school for me which was extremely delicious if I do say so myself. Most importantly, I spoke to my mum. In all honesty, I'm not convinced she will change overnight however I hope I got through to her. I tried to explain what many of you pointed out, bodies change as you grow, eds develop from this, I have more important things to worry about at my age. She seemed sort of receptive and hasn't said anything weight slash food related yet but I'm not sure and I guess only time will tell. Thanks to everyone again, this has been a huge help.